All right, Town Business Sports and Entertainment. You know, got a guy that's familiar with the familiar with the channel. He's a regular now. So, uh, Coach Lopez is in the building. What's going on, Coach? Uh, what's happening? Well, first, I wanted to get your uh, reaction on this past Saturday's fight. In particularly, we'll start with David Benavides. What did you think of David Benavides versus Boslik? Did you get his chance to see it? I saw it in the. Uh... He fought well. Um, Benavidez needs to be more calculating, <clears throat> a little a little smarter. Shows some higher IQ, he, which he's capable of doing. I think he's capable. Um, he got he got a little excited and kind of blew his wad, I think, and f- punched himself out a bit. And ended up being in a harder fight than than uh, he probably anticipated. Uh, probably a little bit disappointed that he didn't get the knockout, but. Overall, I mean, going up to light heavyweight against uh, a really decorated, you know, opponent, former world champion with a lot of amateur experience. Because we all know David Benavidez only had 15 amateur fights. So for him to do that, let's be realistic. That's a, that's it's big. It's a big accomplishment. It shows his pedigree that although he doesn't have the amateur, the deep amateur pedigree, the deep amateur background, that he's still... Um, a top level professional fighter, which is all that matters. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about um, Boslick's size, coach. I mean, he looked, you know, David Benavides is big, but dude looked like he was like, like he. Well, that's like, why there's weight like, division. Man, he looked like he was about 205. That's why there's weight division. So, you know, you know, like junior middleweights walk around at 175. They big guys. Andre Durrell, who I think Andre was a middleweight, though. But he was a big guy. Man, man, I seen him as big as 190 before over there uh, at Virgil's gym. So, the, you know, guys cut a lot of weight. So a 68-pounder is is going to look different than, than the light heavyweight. You know, and so that guy probably walks around, like you said, probably 215, 205. He's just a bigger man. That's how he's able to. That's why he fights at 175. Benavidez, not as big, probably walks around, you know, 190, 200, and he, you know, fights at 168. Well, well, let me ask you this: Do you think uh, his performance versus uh, Boslik might would encourage Canelo to like basically Canelo, start negotiations? Maybe Canelo will try to fight him first, the guy that he fought and uh, see if he can stop him. And then that would possibly bring some interest into a Benavidez-Canelo match. If Canelo can stop him, it might give him the confidence to want to fight Benavidez. But if he fights him, which this is probably what would really happen, is he would probably fight him and have a harder time because of the size difference. Um... But I can easily see him catching him too. Canelo hits hard. He has, he has uh, you know, um, really hard, precise, accurate punches that catch you off guard. And those are the ones that hurt. Okay. So, what did you think of Tank versus Frank? I mean, the fight to me, coach, went exactly how I thought it would go. I thought Tank would eventually catch him, and I thought that he would eventually get him out of there. I mean, it was a typical Tank fight for the most part. You know, Tank fell behind, and Tank had to play catch-up. But, you know, Tank's – that dynamite in both of his fists always seemed to be the equalizer. <laughs> so he equalizer. Tank is uh, – he has explosive one-punch knockout power, and he's smart. He he wears guys down. He waits for that – for them to lose just to just – just inch of their speed, just a small amount of speed. They, he sees them slow down and and then he knows he it's all it's all green lights. He he just he just goes. And um that's what happened. I thought he would I thought he'd stop him earlier to tell you the truth. Just because of the pedigree and Frank Martin is a good fighter though. Don't get me wrong. He's good, but I think Tank is is exceptionally good. Do you think uh Frank Martin was in over his head a fight of that magnitude. I mean, a fight on such a big stage because you know his. They're last, always in over yeah, their head. You know. It's the B side, so 
Yeah, I mean, anybody that loses, of course, you're going to say you're in over their head, but he actually did well. Uh, I know Tank's face was busted up a little bit, and he didn't do that on purpose. So he had some success with him. He was able to hit him. He was, he, he, <laughs> one, I think they had the fight even, or, or in one scorecard, had him down by one point, Frank Martin, or he might have been up. It was close. I think they said he was. I think they said Frank Martin was was up. Me, me, myself, my own personal uh, scorecard. I, I had, I had Tank, I had Tank. You know, pulling away. I pulling gave. away, but he it could have been close at that moment when he got him, but he was pulling away. Like what round did it in? Eight. Eight. So the first four, Martin probably won, and then. Five, six, seven were all tank, just, you know, having his way. And his work was a, a lot more devastating than Frank Martin's work. Frank Martin was boxing and, you know, touching him. And tank was hitting him with, with rockets. How, how would you train? Uh, I mean, how would you train to fight and beat a guy like tank? Well, like, right. what's his weakness? What What is there his you weak, see? His weakness is, is he's a little lazy. And he, he likes to, he goes to the high guard and he's willing to take abuse to get in and get his shot. So it's like that historically is a roll of the dice. If you, you know, are relying on another guy to get tired, what if he doesn't get tired? You know, what if he never gets tired? And that that's kind of how Frankie Randall beat Chavez. It's a very similar uh, Evander Holyfield beat an older Mike Tyson, not a prime Mike Tyson, but an older Mike Tyson. Um, you know, he, it was a battle of attrition, and he was able to get him <clears throat> when he wasn't fresh anymore. So, uh, you know, like the strategy of, 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 of coming in and taking one to give one, that, you know, the baby bull Juan Diaz was a master of it. I thought he was unbeatable for, for quite Me too. Some time. I remember Juan Diaz. He was just, he was just seemed unbeatable. He'd throw a million punches around. But then then then, then uh, Nate Campbell cut him. And he didn't like the sight of his own blood. And, and that, that, that changed him. And he was never the same after that fight. And so, it, it, you know, Tank will have success. <clears throat> uh, for for years to come, you know, for the next couple of years, but there's always that young guy out there that will be able to keep up the pace, who uh, who hits just as hard, and who's just younger and fresher. <laughs> that's just that's just father time. That's the way it goes. Well, is there anybody did you see out out there like right about now at this time that you think could possibly be a real threat to Tank? I mean, what about somebody like the likes of? You know, we're going to leave Devin out of the equation. We're going to talk about Devin later on. But what about a potential fight with uh, Tank versus Shakur Stevenson? And also, uh, Javante Tank Davis said that he's going to start negotiations with a fight with Vasil Lomachenko, which will take place either November or December. What's your assessment of Tank versus Lomachenko? How do you see that fight going? I see it as a 50-50 fight. Um, Tank has never fought in, in a real fight, that caliber of fighter. Um, he's very hittable. Lomachenko <clears throat> is a superb boxer that seems to know how to hit and not get hit. Um, it's just the, the deciding factor in that fight is whether or not he gets old overnight. And he seemed to have gotten old overnight, but then became unold overnight. <clears throat> so he's uh he's that's definitely a good fight. That's a good 50-50 fight. It'll let us know how good Tank really is. If he if he knocks out Lomachenko, he'll be the only one to do it. Um so that you know that's that's there for him to kind of say that he's above everybody. Tiafimo, uh that's also a good fight. But Tiafimo couldn't stop Lomachenko Haney. Uh, obviously, Cambosis was no match for uh, Lomachenko. Um, but um, Tank, if he if he can stop him, he, he goes he goes up. He goes way up. And then uh, a fight with Tiafimo Lopez would be a good fight, possibly at 140 sometime. That's a hard fight for Tank. 
he's a big guy who's very competent and can punch and is uh, extremely talented. And that that would be that's the fight to see. I think that's the fight. That's the fight. Tiafimo versus Tank to me is the fight. Uh, I don't I don't see Shakur Stevenson doing nothing, but I don't I just don't see him. I don't see him beating Tank. He, he what's he gonna do? Just control distance and put us to sleep. Like, like I don't I don't care for the style. Well, Stevenson he, Stevenson is he's a masterful boxer. But as far as like crowd pleasing fighter, he's kind of fell short a little bit. So you feel that um, Edwin De La Santo fight like really like dropped his stock? Yeah, and the Concepcion fight too, bro. Like those fights were boring. Is there anything that? that Shakur can do, like, to possibly, like, he has a fight coming up at their, like, let's just... Uh, Against who? Who? What's his name? We don't know who this who he is. These guys are, keep talking about Tank. I know who Frank Martin is. I know who Ryan Garcia is. I know who Mario Barrios is. I know who Leo Santa Cruz is. Fight, fight somebody. Fight somebody that the people know who they are. Who, who did you say his name? De, De Los Santos? He's trying to spar my son for to get ready. Like, come on, bro. I did not know that. Okay, so, um, all right. So the news came out today that Ryan Garcia was disciplined by the uh, the New York State Athletic Commission. He received a one year suspension. He was fined one million dollars, and the fight was ruled a no contest. And you talked about cheating in boxing and how deep it is. And so, what, what's your assessment on the whole the whole thing? You cheat and get caught. You, you got to pay the piper. I mean, ignorance to the law is not an excuse, especially where we're from. We're in Oakland, California, right yeah, now. We in the hood. You get you get we, caught. We in the hood, hood. Hey man, you get caught with your partner's gun in your car. You're going to jail yeah. unless someone claims the pistol. So <laughs> and you and can't just play stupid and say it's not mine. You're going to jail. Like, and so, they've done that. <laughs> so, so if you take steroids unknowingly, I mean, it's on it's 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 on you. So, um, you know, it's hard to say. I I I don't see Ryan Garcia as a person that would be needing to cheat. But we just, we never know. We never know, like, what goes on in people's heads. His parents, who are good people, they, you know, they're not him, though. Like, you know, like, you can't go off of, oh, but he's got great parents and these, you know, his family. It's, it's like, you never know what these kids are thinking. These, this, this generation of I, children is a lot different from a, when we were growing up. It's real unpredictable, and you just don't really know who to believe. And it's unfortunate because it was a great fight <clears throat> where Devin Haney, um, you know, kind of hap what happened to Sugar Ray Leonard when he fought Duran the first time. It was kind of like that, a little worse, of course, because he he uh, he took a lot of damage, but he he didn't he didn't quit. And it's too bad that they're not going to rematch and you know give Devin Haney that chance to redeem himself. But I wouldn't want to redeem redeem myself against someone that got caught cheating. I mean, you you can't you can't like accidentally drink alcohol and then take away a DUI. If you get a DUI, you get a DUI. It's the way it is. I didn't know that it had alcohol in it. Like, yeah, I I think what kind of like bothered me is just every story that he came up with on how it got in the system from so-called supplements. It got blown up in the shreds. To, it got to the point to where the supplement companies said, you know what, he's lying and we're gonna take legal action. I just think, me, myself, my own personal assessment, I think he did it. I, I think he know he did it and I just think that he's just, he just don't wanna take accountability. And the thing is, I come around you, I come around other people to, and I'm not a boxer. But I'm around boxers, and I'm just thinking to myself, you a trainer and you a father. Your son, and you was a fighter. 
you put your fucking life on the line every time you jumped in that ring. Yeah. And you already have to worry about one punch that could possibly turn you into Dooku Kim. And then you find out that this guy had some shit in his system that enhanced his performance. So that's probably why I was so angry about it. And then just the fact that he just coming up with these elaborate, elaborate stories on how it got in his system from the devil. Then he said Jesus gave him a vision that I mean, so I think that's where the frustration came from because, you know, and I, I'm, you know, and I come around you and your son and I, I'm just thinking, well, damn, like, what if, you know, yeah, I mean, if someone yeah. knowingly cheats, man, they, they should, they should be brought up on criminal charges for attempted murder. In my opinion, I, I've said that verb, uh, out, outwardly for years that <clears throat> it should, it should be looked at as attempted murder. And that includes Canelo, you know, with the, with, with the meat thing. Like, oh, how did he uh, get, how his, did he get away with this mystery super burritos? You know, he just gets to eat. <laughs> so this guy just gets to eat meat. And 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 make and blame the meat. So like, well, why couldn't Ryan Garcia blame the ashwagandha? If that's the case, you know, it's like, I don't know, bro. Like, they need to have better tests. They need to. They this should you know open people's eyes. But there's a lot of money on the line. I don't know what to think. But if someone does it to my son, it's, it's going to be bad for you. You try to cheat on us and uh, put drugs in your body. It's going to be all bad. And and Dave Davey has a fight coming up, right? Yeah. So tell everybody uh when is his next fight? It'll be in the sixth fight, um, July twelfth in Atlanta on overtime, which will be on his own. Um yeah. We're looking to have a spectacular performance and, another know. spectacular KO. Yeah, that's the idea. And then you know, get to the next fight, step by step. All right, so Coach, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. So once again, tell everybody where where we're at, where they can find you for interviews and all that good stuff. It's because we finna turn this into a national landmark. We finna turn this into the... We're at the, 5845 MacArthur Boulevard on the corner of Seminary and MacArthur in Oakland, California at the Lightning's Boxing Club. And what is the social media? Lightning's Boxing Club um, <clears throat> on Instagram uh, and Lightning's Boxing Club on Facebook. Lightning's BC on Twitter. Oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, Coach, you know, the last couple of interviews that you did, a lot of the ladies are, they've been inquiring about you. So I said, hey, I, I don't have nothing to do with that. So you got you know, a lot. We always love for the ladies to like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a married guy. I'm married. You know what I'm saying? But... I appreciate the compliments. All right. <laughs> hey, so, hey, hey, ladies. Hey, I asked. Hello, uh, ladies. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, hey, I, I asked. So, there's your answer. All right. <laughs> so, thank you, Coach. Sure.